Okay, happy Saturday. Welcome back to Twin Stick Garage. So this week's episode, I'm going to focus on continuing to build up this 79 Kenworth in the spirit of the one used in the Smoking the Bandit movie. Safe and sound, everybody ask Bandit how he And I'm still waiting for the graphics shop to print out the gold stripes that are going to go on the truck. Hopefully they can get that done and we'll do that in the next episode. But what I figured I'd focus on this Saturday is the inside of the truck. So if you've been following the build for a while, you'll know that I actually had this interior just about finished, uh, um, probably 90% finished in cedar brown. And what ended up happening was those panels had to be modified. So I sent them down to Tennessee to the day cab company and on the way back on the FedEx truck, it accidentally burned to the ground. Now, normally that wouldn't be a big deal. You could just get new panels made up, but that particular color had been discontinued and they used up the last little bit of material that they had on the panels that, uh, that accidentally burned to the ground. So the day cab company said, you know what, don't worry, we'll make you new panels. I think you're gonna like them. And uh, so we've got a whole new interior that we're gonna put in today. Uh, with any luck, I can get it finished in the bunk and in the cab. We'll put the seats back in there and get this interior back to where it was. So let's get at her. Okay, so here's, here's the new panels. So get these opened up. Okay, so again, I had cedar brown in this truck and a lot of people were commenting that doesn't match the movie. The movie truck had black and it's true. The movie truck had black panels and then the cream colored, the, the classic Kenworth cream colored uh, headliner in both the cab and the bunk. And I originally was gonna go with black, but then I thought black uh, floor, black seats, black paint, black interior, I just thought it'd be too dark. So that's why I tried to do the, the cedar brown to brighten it up a little bit. But I guess uh, the trucking gods didn't want me to have uh, cedar brown. so. We went with black, but I told the day cab company, I said, let's do something a little fancier. So I thought in the spirit of the, the color scheme of the gold and black for the truck, I would go black panels with, uh, with the gold stitching. And that really turned out nice. That just pops beautifully. Because of course the truck's got the, the black or the dark brown paint with the, with the gold bars, the hood pulls black and gold. Trans Am was black and gold. I just thought this was, uh, was a nice touch. So this is kind of my own spin on it, but it really turned out nice. So thanks again, Day Cab Company. All right, let's get the rest of this uh, unpacked and we'll, uh, we'll start throwing it in the truck. Ooh, those are nice. Yeah, very cool. Cool. All right, so the day cab company does send you all the gear you need to install this, which includes a whole bunch of these self-tapping screws with little washers on it. And you use those in the spots that you're not really gonna see. And then the spots that you are gonna see, they actually send you these self-tappers with the heads on it. And they send you a whole pile of buttons in the same vinyl that your panel's made in the same color. So you can kind of camouflage for wherever you actually have to put a screw that you're gonna see. So it kind of does a nice job of camouflaging that. So. All you really need is a, um, a, um, a drill with a, with a Phillips head on it and you're good to go. Now in some spots where it's not aluminum, uh, sometimes you may have to install it into a steel rail or something, then you might need to drill a small tiny little hole just to get the self-tapper started. And that's basically it. So I actually, I'm not, a, a Milwaukee's still not a sponsor and that's fine, I just, I like the tools. But one thing I got a bit of a, a gripe is the charger. I had an M12, M18 charger and it died on me. It just stopped working. And I don't know if that's because I, I wore it out because I, 
I use the impact so much. I was using that orbital sander to sand this whole truck. I use the polisher and it just gobbles through batteries. So the charger died. So I went over to Home Depot and I tried to get a new charger and I was thinking maybe 30, 40 bucks just for the charger. And they had a charger with a battery and it was $200. And I thought that's, that's ridiculous. So I was wandering around Home Depot and I saw this, they had this on special, which included the drill, the quarter inch impact, the charger and two batteries for $199. So I guess what Milwaukee's trying to do is they're, they're trying to incentivize you to buy the tools and, and pick their, their tooling as your horse you're going to go with because you're going to end up having all the batteries. But I just couldn't believe A, that the battery charger died after a little over a year of use and that B, they were charging so much just to get a, a replacement. So I'm not happy about that, but I am kind of happy that I've got some new tools here. So we'll unpackage these and we'll, we'll use them for installing the interior. Okay, so since I've done this once before, I kind of know a few tricks. And what I asked the day cab company to do is make the boot with a little more material so it goes up a little higher. So what I did last time was I actually ran the boot over top of the over top of the panel like that. And I didn't really like the look of it. So I think what I'm gonna do this time is we're gonna put the boot in place first and then we'll put the panel over top of it. I think it'll be a cleaner installation. So we'll try that. And another thing I've learned with these, uh, these uh, interior installation installs is these clamps can be your best friend because they hold things in place while you're trying to get it all lined up before you start drilling holes. <clears throat> okay, maybe I'll move you out of the way for now. There we go. Yeah, that's gonna look good. So this is what they call the crawl through sleeper opening as opposed to the the lower cut walk through or the real big hole one where you can actually tilt the seat back in in the newer in the newer trucks now the reason i'm sticking with this smaller crawl through opening is again because it matches the movie That looks way nicer. And again, good idea to use your, your clamps before you start putting the screws in, just to make sure it's even and square. Gotta admit these Milwaukee tools are pretty sweet. See, with, uh, with installing these interiors, there's no instructions. It's kind of, you can drill the holes wherever you want. And the bottom here, it's held in by the, the seat belt buckles, but probably one right in the center. And another trick I learned is keep the, don't screw uh, right where the stitching is because uh, the screw will cut the, the thread and then it'll start unraveling. So you want to pick one side or the other. But I think, one there might be nice just to hold it in place. I want to be something like this. Oh wait, is there aluminum there? That's the other trick is make sure wherever you're going to screw it in that there's actually going to be some meat to catch. Now the, uh, the new cab corners here, they've done something different. They've put carpet on the bottom, which I think is, uh, is a nice touch because it goes into the, it'll match nicely to the carpet on the, on the bottom of the door panels. So these guys bend into the corners. Like so. Oh, that looks sharp. And then the square edge matches up. 
Yeah, I'm happy with that. Yeah, that's nice. And there's that carpet I was talking about. And look how nice it just lines right up. That's cool. So I switched over to the buttons. I just thought it looked a little more finished than just showing the screw heads. So for, for this cab corner, I realized that once I put that in there, I won't be able to access the back side of those bolt holes. So that's for the, the antenna, and then there's a, a grab handle that goes in those guys. So I'm gonna have to go dig those out of my parts bin and throw those on the truck, and then I'll be able to put the, that cab corner in place. So I'm just polishing up the antenna and the grab handle. It was a little corroded, so just using a scotch brake pad on the old Milwaukee. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it's taking out the scratches, so I'll just keep working on that there and make it look a little nicer. Oh, I couldn't resist. This is another squirrel moment for twin sticks. I wanted to see if I could get it shiny with the polishing wheel, but it's actually turning out nice. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> okay, Mark, let's get back to the interior. Yeah, it's kind of fun to start bolting stuff back on the truck, so I I got the grab handle, the antenna, I threw the five lights up there and the air horns. So that's coming together. So back to the inside, but man, that's getting exciting. There's a good example. There must be some steel behind there. So now we'll drill a, a little pilot hole. And now that screw should go in a little better. There we go. That's in there solid. All right, so I've just been working on putting in the headliner. So it was a, it was a bit of work. And then I had to drill a hole for the, for the spotlight. I still got to do the cutout for the radio and a cutout for the speaker. So I'll probably take it back out of there, but man, is that ever going to look sharp? So what I decided to do was I cut out the opening and then I've got this, uh, this was the original plate, the radio plate that came with the truck. So now I'm just fiberglassing it in just to uh, have some good support to hold the radio in place. I just found that when I cut out the hole for that, uh, that cutout, I wasn't too happy with the edges. They weren't perfectly square. So I thought, ah, oh, we'll just fiberglass this whole thing in. And then I could just sand it down and, and paint it black. It'll be fine. There. Something like that. All right, so while I'm waiting for that to dry, I figured I'd move on to the, the door panels. Now these are pretty easy because there's no, uh, there's no viewing window in the passenger door. And of course, that would be the cutout. I'd have to cut that out and then fold it all back. But since these are solid doors, I don't need to worry about that. The only thing that I do need to worry about is the opening for the, the window crank. So that just sits on there like that. And it's a tiny hole, so what I like to do is just a little X. Now there's a chrome cap that goes over that, so you're not really gonna see it. There it goes. Oh, that is nice. Okay, so down here on the carpet, I think I can get away with, well, we'll clamp it just to make sure it's square before I start putting it in. So you look for an even gap, top to bottom. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. So down in the carpet here, I can get away with these black screws because you won't see them. that. Now I need to decide where I'm going to put the screws for the upper. Maybe in the corners. 
Yeah, maybe something like that. Symmetrical. And we'll use the, the fancy button ones. Now, don't want to put it too close to the edge either because you don't want it to impact any of the, the molding or the rubber uh, weather stripping. So the last piece is the, the little cover plate and there's a spring there. Oh, look at that. Right on, looking good. Okay, here's the part of the job that I have been putting off till last. Uh, trying to install the interior in the back. Now this scaffold does help some. Better than doing it off the ladders. <laughs> Where's your knee pads, Daddy? Look at your knees, Daddy. Why didn't you wear your knee pads? Wear your knee pads, skin your back. Don't wear them, you skin your knees. Uh, that actually wasn't too, too bad. You know what? I'm really digging this though with the sleeper boot on the inside. That just looks like how it's supposed to be. So there you go, day cab company. It only took me uh, three tries to finally get it right and realize the boot goes on the inside. <laughs> but yeah, that looks sharp. Okay, I guess that's all that's left in here now is to, uh, I gotta cut a hole for the heater controls and the lights on the, the headliner and then stuff that in here. And I remember that was, uh, that was a tough fit. These are actually the easy, the easy parts. Okay, so before I put the headliner in the bunk, I've got to cut a hole for the, the heater controls. This is the heater and air conditioning. And then uh, the reading lights. So there was one there and then one there on the original plastic headliner that the truck came with from Kenworth. So what we'll do is uh, I'm gonna mark this out, get a good center line mark it out. I'm going to cut just the cardboard and lift the cardboard out and then I'm going to slice the, the vinyl, the black vinyl, and then peel it inwards and then glue it and staple it down and then I can push, push the lights and such through and then we can go ahead and put the headliner in the truck. Yeah, so it's pretty easy. You just cut an opening there. You cut out the, uh, the white foam. And then I like to slice a little V at each end to peel that off. And you don't want to go right into the corner. You want to leave a little bit of material there. As you can see, it kind of stretches out in the corner. If you cut all the way into the corner, you might see it from the inside. And with the, the heater controls, they're going to push through from the back, but then the lights will push through from the front, kind of like that. And then I just, I do some spray glue to try and hold it in place. And then I, I give it a couple staples just to make sure it's secure. So with that, I guess it's ready to stuff this thing into the bunk. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. Uh, pretty tight fit to get it in there, but it's gonna look sharp. Wipe all the footprints off the the ceiling there, so you can see where I put the put the lights in and got the controls there. So now I'll just throw a bunch of uh, the button screws in there, and it should be it should be done. Sweet. Okay, home stretch. So now I've got to cut out the the openings for the uh, the vents on each of the, the bunk doors. So same idea, I'm just gonna cut 
going to cut the cardboard off. And they've kind of got this already pre-marked. So that makes it pretty easy. Actually, I might use this wheel instead. There, something like that. Okay, now this one's a little tricky because you've got stitching to deal with because of course they've stitched all the pleats. So I got to cut out the foam carefully. And then again, I'm going to be cutting the vinyl and then peeling it inwards, glue it and staple it down. Oh, I'm starting to run out of steam. Putting an interior in a truck's a lot of work. But we're getting close, we're getting close. Now again, same idea. You wanna make sure you have an even gap all the way around. So it's best to take your time with this before you start drilling holes. Hard to unring those bells. I mentioned, Stay away from the threads. I learned that the hard way. If you catch, the, if you dry and drive a screw through the threads, it'll start to unravel. So you want to just go on the, on the edge, on the outside of them. Something like this. Yeah, it actually takes longer to cut out the opening than it does to actually put it on the Put it on the door, but that looks sharp. All right, so the final piece now is the headliner, the cab. Now I cut the holes for the speaker, and I got the the mount for the radio. And in typical twin stick fashion, I pivoted once more, and I'm not going to put that Kenworth radio in. I think I'll save it for the Duke because the slot opening wasn't actually large enough. So I just, I cut it out for the radio that I actually pre-wired uh, a few episodes ago. I thought it's already wired. It's, uh, it's gonna be easier. We'll just go with that. Okay. So now, this is a bit of a, this is a bit of a trick to get in here. Getting closer. Okay, there you go, one interior. So I crawled up in there and I wiped down all the, the dust and scuff marks and had a few more screws to put in, but uh, pretty happy with the way that turned out. Took a little bit of time, but uh, in the end it was worth it. And I have to say special thanks to the day cab company for making me new panels after the, the old ones burned to the ground with this black and uh, gold stitching. I think it really goes well with the, with the theme of the truck. I just, I love the panels. And it's funny because the more you do something, the better you get at it. I'm still pretty far away from being a professional interior installer, but I learn each time I go and it gets a little bit better. And I have to say putting the sleeper boot on the inside gives it a much nicer finished look. I was starting so, to hurry. It's the end of the day. I'm getting tired. I started getting careless. So when I cut out the holes for the speaker, I ended up uh, the hole saw uh, caught and nailed my thumb pretty good, but uh, no worries. I did the old electrical tape and and paper towel, but it shows you start hurrying, you get tired, you get careless. That's usually when you get hurt. So I'm going to wrap it up there. Uh, but in, in full transparency, I also, I mucked that up too, because the paint was still wet, but I wanted to get the, the ceiling panel in there and I mucked the paint up on that. So I'm going to have to sand it down and repaint it. I could probably just do it in situ. I'll just kind of mask off the, the windows and the panels, but all in all, it turned out really good. There's still more to do just like, you know, never ending project. I guess I was a little optimistic thinking I could get the, the seats in and all that. I still have to, I still have to do this. Uh, the, the day cab company gave me a new panel for the dash, but I'm going to cut the holes out again, just a little too tired, a little too long in the, in the day to start mucking with that. I might screw that up as well. So I'll leave that for next week. But 
again, you can uh, you can always tune in and, and see what I'm up to in a, in a future episode. But like I say, if you've got an old truck and you want to refresh the interior, go check out the day cab company, daycabs.com. They have got all kinds of different uh, materials. They can do interiors for any truck on the market. Uh, they're even starting to get into cab overs now. You can send them your old panels and they can either stitch it up like the way it used to be, like this straight stitching here, or they can do the diamond tuft with the buttons. They can do a lot of different things. So go check out their website. They got a lot of great examples there and, uh, and give them a call if you need a new interior. And don't forget, if you got it, the trucker brought it. Click the Twin Stick Garage logo to subscribe and be sure to comment down below. I encourage you to share any thoughts, feedback, suggestions, stories, or even just a simple hello. I read and appreciate every one. And if you really want to help out the channel, head over to my Patreon, a subscription-based service that you can sign up and see videos before they're released on YouTube. I'm also going to be posting some content that you can't see anywhere else, so go check it out.